Hello, this is Christy. In this video, I'm going to show you in Camtasia how to create an animated subscription call to action frame for YouTube. And like you see in this example right here around me now, and also how to build this, how to make it customizable, how to animate the little elements and how to think when building this so that it is, you know, we take advantage of the functions in Camtasia to make this animated subscribe frame or whatever this is called, I don't even know, um, to be able to save it to our library and then you reuse it in other projects. So this is going to be quite easy if we think about it and plan ahead. So it's important to plan ahead what you're going to do. And the animated frame is really just, you know, you're playing your video and then at some point in the video, you scale everything down and you bring in this frame that you show people, you know, please subscribe to my channel, all those things. And then you zoom back out and continue with the video. So it's a little bit of an original way to show people that you would like them to maybe subscribe to your channel. So how are we going to build this? Well, it helps to uh, use something like a guide. So I have a picture. I have this here, a video open in YouTube so that I can see the layout of the page, right? Because I want to design everything sort of proportional and similar to this layout in YouTube, because that's the recognizable thing that people will see. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this page. And I'm going to import that into Camtasia just to use it as a guide. It's not going to be part of the final design, but I'm going to use it as a guide when building this. So I'm going to grab a screenshot of this. I may use uh, Snagit for this. So I'm going to use Snagit to grab a picture of this page using the region as a selection. So click on Capture. And I'm going to just click on this full image, which is going to be selecting uh, the whole page. So I'm just going to drag and define the area. And here we go. So this is the image now opened in Snagit. Let me send it to Camtasia. Here we go. So now the screenshot is in Camtasia. Don't forget to save your project. As I always say, sometimes it crashes, sometimes it doesn't, you don't know. So maybe just to be safe, let's save. So now that I have this image in here, I know exactly where stuff needs to go. Maybe I don't want the top or the bottom or something. So I may, I may resize this a little bit just to remove the top bar of the tabs, maybe inset a little bit there, you know, just bring it in and I have the sidebar. So what I want to do is to suggest a subscription page like this. And really the important part is this subscribe button down here and the like button maybe, and you know, the sidebar here with the suggested videos. doesn't matter what it is in there, but I'm using this as a guide. So here we go. So now what I'm going to do is just create a mock-up of this area, right? So basically I just go to annotations and start designing the elements that I'm going to have on the screen. The first, the main element is really going to be the main screen area where actually my video is going to live. So I'm going to bring an annotation in here on the full screen. And the reason I'm doing it full screen is this. The video that I will be playing during the whatever video I'm doing that I'm, I'm going to introduce this into will be kind of 16 by 9 aspect, right? Which means I must make sure that this image is 16 by 9 so I don't actually have a different aspect ratio. And then when I'm scaling this stuff in and the video is in there, it's going to be having, you know, blank edges or something. So use the control key now and rotate the mouse wheel to make it smaller and place it right there. If you find it hard to see, maybe make it red just so you can see. So you see right here, I'm resizing it and I'm placing it where the video is. It is actually not a problem if you resize this and it is actually kind of smaller than the one that you see here, because we're not going to see the one from YouTube anyway. I'm using it as a placement guide. So here we go. So I'm going to put that in sort of here. Okay. So now I know that whatever video I put in there is going to be 16 by 9. Okay. So that's easy to know. Even if uh, it seems like in my browser where I grabbed this, it was uh, close, but not really close. I can always use the uh, uh, shift and control keys to drag the corners and really make it fit right there if you really want to. Anyway, so that's the main area where the video is going to live. Now, 
We have a several elements in there. Of course, we're not going to use text elements and stuff. So what I'm going to do is copy this red area, control shift and resize it while dragging. I'm going to paste that, make a copy of it. Let's make that one a different color, maybe blue, doesn't matter. And let's create these ones on the side. So I'm obviously not going to create the video thumbnails. I'm just going to suggest that there might be video thumbnails down there. So this one is one of them. Again, resize, control shift key, hold it down when you drag the corner to make it fit in there. Okay. And to suggest the text next to the videos, again, make an annotation, bring it in there and just make it like a title right there and resize it like this. Make sure you leave a little room between them so that they are distinguishable and maybe less size. Control C, Control V to make a copy and make this one shorter like this to just suggest some text in there. So make all of these gray, select all of them and make them sort of gray. So I'm just going to select a, like a gray color there, maybe something lighter like this. Okay. So that's my sort of uh, sidebar with the video, one video control G to group them. And it helps if you give names to stuff. So right click on this group, rename it and call it a uh, suggested video. Okay, so we know what that is if I if I need to go back in there and make some changes. Suggested video. Obviously, I want a few of these, so I'm going to control C, control V and put a bunch in there just to suggest my uh, suggest my suggested videos along the sidebar right there like this and just zoom out make sure you kind of and I don't want to show the ads so I'm going to start from the top with these I'm just going to move them with the arrow keys to the top and make copy paste make another copy of them right there and here we go kind of like this and possibly I need another set to go right outside of the screen like this there. Okay. So now if I hide my suggested image, it's starting to shape up. Now, another thing, we want to suggest the title of the video right there. Again, I'm not going to use anything, just a bunch of rectangles. Here we go. And that's my title, my video title right there and possibly my logo. Okay, now this thing with the logo, if you want to suggest like this is your channel, right? So that's what people should be subscribing to. Now in the corner here, you may want to show your logo, maybe to suggest people that it should be logo. But for now, let's just put a circle because that's, I don't want to be spending too much time on this. So I'm going to go to the shapes here and use this circle and resize it. And that's going to be my where my logo is. And that's fine if we are kind of on top of other stuff. We really don't need to respect the proportion of everything and the placement because we just want to show the stuff that's important to us. I'm going to use an, anime, an annotation there and I'm going to put the name of the channel right next to there. Just drag an annotation and call it channel name. Okay. We're going to make this customizable, by the way. This is really cool. And by the way, at the end, if you don't feel like building this yourself, I will have this asset already built for you if you want to buy it in my assets library. So the link is in the description. You can get it from there already made with all these customizations we're demonstrating in here. So I'm going to make this one uh, bold. Let's change the color because I cannot see it. And let's call this bold right there. That's my channel name. And again, the size really doesn't have to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to place it right there. You can put another one underneath with like your subscriber number if you really care. But we want this to be something like an evergreen stuff. So I'm just going to leave the channel name right there. That's my subscribe thing. We'll come back to that when we feel like we need to make some changes to it. So I'm going to select this channel name and the circle, group them and rename the group channel identity, right? So because we need to stay organized and we want to make sure we know what stuff where stuff is. So channel 
identity. Okay, that's gonna be the logo in there. We're gonna put that in there in a minute. This is the channel title. Again, this is one shape. We can have a shape in here and just leave it and make it kind of the gray that we did on the other one. So let's use this lighter gray there. Okay, we can revisit this. This is the screen area. We've done the sidebar. Let's group the sidebar just to make it easy to see where stuff is. So the sidebar with the suggested videos are all of these videos that I copied in here. I can select all of them and group and rename this sidebar. Let's call it sidebar, okay? If I go in there now, by the way, here they are, I can make changes to them, that's fine. So closing the sidebar, save your project. So, you know, just keeping the thing, you know, the project clean, right click on the tracks here and say, remove all empty tracks. Because as we add tracks, Camtasia creates more tracks. And then when you group stuff, of course, you're left with a bunch of blank tracks. So now we've got this uh, already here. Let me just make some room again. This is looking nice. If you turn off the guide one, you know, it looks kind of nice. Now, if I want to show the YouTube logo at the top, maybe I can do this. I'm not going to do this, by the way. I'm just going to leave uh, maybe, or maybe I should do it. I don't know. You can look up a YouTube logo somewhere. So if I want to put the YouTube logo, I brought it from the internet. There it is, a uh, logo. You know, you just place it on the project here and I want it to be larger than the one that's shown in my thumbnail so you can use the alt key if you don't find a PNG version and just crop it to eliminate some of the white area around it and leave it there maybe now this is the moment where you think okay do I want to have the the logo is obviously on top of the video so now how do I make some room in here for that logo okay if i really want to be kind of realistic with the whole thing if you don't care about some more space in there uh that's fine but if you do then you we can okay okay resize this hold down the control and shift key or just a control key or just a shift key to resize proportionally and perhaps you want to move this a little lower and uh, also the name the title you know, just your decision, what you want to do with this, make it smaller. And then here we go. So now I've made room for that YouTube. Of course, the sidebar is now off, so I don't want to lose my aspect ratio. So I can take the sidebar and I can just resize it like this. So I'm filling more and moving it down there. Okay, so there's there it is. Now, if I hide this guide, it's kind of looking like a YouTube. So Another thing I want to do is I want to put a, a white background behind this whole thing here. Okay, so I'm just going to make some room. And you bring an annotation, white annotation, go to the annotations, rectangle, just put that in there and fill the screen with that. And of course, move that track to the bottom right there. So this is looking quite nice. Now, okay, if you want to do more stuff, like you want to put a search bar there, I'm you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I want to go to the main part, which is the subscribe call to action right there. So the subscribe call to action occupies this area here. If I put this background there and I bring in this thing, there's the button and there's the like and the share. Now, YouTube have recently redesigned kind of these things and they're always moving stuff around. So what I want to do is my subscribe button has to be the biggest thing. And I also need to have that bell icon. Well, if I move this image just to show you, you can see the bell icon is right next to the subscribe button. OK, so I'm, I can't obviously I've covered this. So I need to put my subscribe action thing in here in this corner, which is the main area of you know importance. So let's design a subscribe button. Very simple. Just go to the uh, annotations and just grab one of these annotations that's got a, a background around it maybe. So this one, for example, just bring that in there, make it red background and also remove the border thickness zero. Let's make the text white. The version that you're seeing here is when they are about to subscribe. Now, if you're already subscribed, it's gray, as you can see down there. So we'll make that animation change. So this is the one where you're not subscribed yet, in which case it is red. So just to move it there, double click and say subscribe. Okay, here we go. Subscribe. And you know what? I'm going to make that bold. 
even though it may not be bold in the variant uh, like this. And also you can use the size just to make it a little smaller so it has a little padding. Again, we are not going for accuracy of pixel kind of thing. We are going for big impact. We want people to subscribe to the channel. That's the subscribe button. And on the side, we're going to put the bell icon. And on the left, we're going to put the like button. Okay, that's the thing we're going to work with. Now, I didn't want to waste a lot of time. So what I did was in the media, I have already created these vector images. So I've got the bell icon right there. It's a PNG image. Um, okay. And I have the other like button hand. This is the hand with the like button. There it is. Right. And I also have the hand, the cursor, the mouse, which is again, I traced that in, um, I traced it in Zara Designer or Affinity. I cannot, uh, in Affinity Designer, yes. And also we have the like icon that doesn't, um, is inactive, you know, the, the default. So I'm just going to put that there and I'm going to make it the same size as the, the one that's after that. Okay. Here we go. So these are the icons we're going to use for images. We're going to use these ones. Okay. So don't worry about the timing of this because we're going to play with the timing later. We're just going to create the animated item and then put it inside of another item. So just planning ahead, right? So my frame so far doesn't do anything. You see, it just sits there on the screen. If I zoom out, I'm going to remove the background guide thing. I may not even need that anymore. So here we go. This is what I got so far. Now, remember, very nice thing that we grouped these things that allows me to go inside the sidebar and you can see these ones in here that I have, which are, you know, if I move those up, okay, I move them up there. doesn't matter. You know, that's the thing. So in here, I've got like two of them that I don't really need. Double click to go inside of that group, click on these ones and just delete them. So now everything's clean. Um, coming outside of that group. So keeping stuff in groups is nice. However, Camtasia has some quirks with groups. So just be careful when you work with groups because they may clip some stuff. They may rotate stuff in the wrong place and all those things. So just, you know, be careful. But anyway, it helps you to keep stuff organized. So now we're dealing with this thing here. The first thing is this thing's going to come in and we're going to show the subscribe button and we're going to show the hand coming on clicking on it and then the subscribe button changes to gray right so that's what we want to do this is the hand and again the hand we want it to be very prominent right so it's going to come on here and if i'm not happy with the fact that the the hand does you know the hand is kind of large, so I'm going to just bring it there. So this is the point where my hand should come in and click on the on the button. Now I could rotate the hand a little bit to make it more natural or whatever. It doesn't matter. So again, as I said, it doesn't matter when or where I'm animating this. So I'm just going to make some room here because the only place I care about is this. So this is my hand. Let's delete the other icons. They are confusing. And the bell. The bell, yeah, okay, we can put the bell on there because we're not really doing much with the bell. We're just going to click on it and shake it a couple of times. And by the way, if you're using Camtasia 2022, in the library that comes with Camtasia 2022, you have something called a UI kit. And you may have some YouTube stuff in here I've seen, including the animation with the channel kit. That's the folder you want. And you've got a flashy subscribe and the stuff and the hand and the stuff in here. So this one, subscribe slider, or you can have the flashy subscribe. So look, if I bring that in, I mean, if you're in Camtasia 2022, you might as well just use this, I guess. Look, there's the button and the arrow. Okay, that's not the one we want. Let's try another one. Subscribe sidebar. If you're using Camtasia 2022, there are some animations in there that deal with like YouTube subscribe call to actions and buttons and things, but they don't really do this here. So let's build this. Let's focus on this area. Before we do this, I'm going to just, like I said, I'm going to bring this bell icon and just place it in there like that. 
And by the way, the bell icon, um, really, it, it's it's by default, it's not activated. So it, it may look a little different, but it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to move that in there. And then we can bring maybe the like button. So the like button should also be on the page right there. So something like this, maybe smaller. Here we go. Again, what we are going for is impact in terms of what people should do, less about accuracy and proportions and, you know, the, the way that things are in uh, YouTube. So I'm going to make this button a bit wider and just space things out. So I, I'm happy with this placement. Okay. Now to bring the hand in. Okay. So the bringing the hand in it can happen anywhere. So I'm just going to zoom out here. This is all the stuff I have. Uh, you can zoom out uh, with using the Alt plus, Alt minus, slides things, makes the tracks uh, shorter or taller. You can also use this slider in here, look, to make the uh, tracks taller, just to have it easier moving around uh, to the areas you want to focus on. So here we go. I've got the hand and the like, and the hand, I'm going to move it at the top. Okay, so this is the hand icon right there, and this is the call out with the button. Here we go. These are the things we're focusing on now. Now, the way we're going to do this is the hand is going to come in from the bottom and appear as if it's clicking. And in that moment, the button changes to subscribed and the hand moves on to like and then to the bell. Or maybe we should start with the like, like, subscribe and bell. We can do that. OK, let's do that. So this is the hand. It's going to start here first. So the hand is going to come in at some point click on the hand icon and add an animation shift and a this is the animation with the hand the hand is already clicking on the like button i may make it a bit smaller like this and here we go so now the hand is coming in i'm going to move the playhead before this and just put the hand outside of the screen right there so now the hand is going to come in okay here the hand Let's move it a bit there is going to click, right? So a click action could be adding a small animation that has like a frame or two, like a couple of frames. And you can use control shift to rotate the hand down like this. I'm not going to use a different icon of the hand clicking because that's not, it's not going to be there for too long. So it clicks. So let's see. Okay, it clicks and then it comes right back to the normal position, which means I'm going to reset the rotation everywhere. One, two, and three, clicking on these icons. So now the hand is clicking. You can see it clicking and comes in, clicks. Here we go. Easy. Now, another point where the hand is clicking is going to be it's going to move from here to the subscribe button, which is about here and it's going to click again now the click action if i click on this timeline uh, i keyframe here the click action is really i want to keep it vertical so i don't care about these two values what i care about is the x value horizontal uh rotation which means 52 degrees minus okay so i'm going to go in here add a little animation and minus 52 in the x right there you go and then I'm going to move a little more, shift and A again, and then reset that to zero. So there's another click. Yeah, very easy. I mean, okay, if in addition to the click, you want to also uh, make the hand a little smaller, that's fine, up to you. There it is. People are not going to have time to see this. And finally, we're going to move to the bell icon, another animation right there, and move it here on the bell. Here we go. And again, move a couple of frames and minus 52. Move it up, perhaps. Click on it and just move it up. And then here, shift A and remove the rotation. Very easy click now it did move a bit so i'm gonna just okay here we go i don't like it hands up higher go down again 
Okay. Let's suppose the hand has finished moving around. I place another animation and the hand will go out. Let's review the whole animation. It comes in, click, click, click. Okay, I don't lot like that click at all. It seems to move towards the right and it needs to go back down again. And here as well. Here we go. And goes, okay. I'm I'm perfectly happy for this right now. So we've got the hand. Now, in these various events, we need to make sure that the hand changes the state of these buttons. So right here, this is the first one we clicked. This is when the icon becomes the dark icon. So I'm going to go to the YouTube light icon, slice it, delete that, or in fact, no, not deleting. The second piece of it, I'm going to replace it with the full icon, which is this one here. Right click, replace selected media on the timeline. So that is going to keep the location, you see? Okay, so that, now that's going to click, it's going to change. Done. Here we go. On the event of this, I want to make a slice in the subscribe callout. I want to cut it. And that becomes a second call out, which if I move here, it's going to say subscribe D and it's going to be a different color. So let's make that the, the gray version, uh, too dark, maybe too light. Yeah, maybe somewhere around there. And let's make the text black. I believe that's what it does there or make the text kind of this dark gray. Here we go. So now when the when the hand clicks, the button changes. There we go. And now the bell. Now the bell is going to kind of wave a little bit, right? So it's not going to just change into anything. It's just going to wave like that, which means this is my bell right here. And I'm going to add an animation for the whole duration starting when it clicks. OK, so I'm going to make it wave right click and uh, add a bar maybe a spring to it and then rotate like 15 degrees and then move inside of this animation and do minus 15 and in here minus 15 so we're going to just jiggle this a bit let's see okay it Maybe I want it to jiggle more. Copy these frames, select them all, and just paste them there. So Camtasia is going to paste the animation frames before the playhead. So we want to choose these new ones and just place them there. So now it should be two jiggles. That's nice. Okay. So I don't know. If you want to go in visual effects and you want to go to motion blur and just give this one a blur. I don't know. I don't think it makes a lot of difference because it's very small. Anyway, this is the whole thing. Here we go. Now let's see everything. The hand comes in, click, subscribed, subscribed, and it's out. Very easy, right? So this is the part of the animation that we want to focus on. This is the part of the animation that needs to stay in there while the frame is staying in there. And then as the frame goes out, of course, I don't need this anymore. So. The whole thing is this long. This is the whole thing I need with the hand animation, right? So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Done. Now, this whole portion lasts about five seconds, which is great. This is great. Five seconds is fantastic because what I need is if I zoom out now, I want to see the whole thing. Now, before the hand animation, I need to bring this frame in and then I need to take it out. Nothing could be easier. The thing is, we already talked about the groups. Yeah, so that's easy. So let me show you now. Very easy. Let's select the call out with the hand movement, the subscribe button, the like button and the bell. You see, I'm not selecting anything else. Just these four elements right there. This is the hand. This is the call out with the gray and the red. This is the 
hand like button and the bell, right? So they're all there. Group. That is a whole group in itself. Now, right click on it and rename it and let's call it subscribe CTA, call to action, right? Make sure you save. And now there it is. It's still working. It's just its own little tiny group. Now, the nice stuff is we have the logo right there. We have the channel identity, which is the stuff on the left. And we have the shape of the main, um, whatever that is, the title. And we've got the sidebar and we have the red area, which is not going to stay red. I'm just going to, you know, uh, remove that from the background. You're going to see why. So there it is. Now I don't need my guide image anymore. So I'm going to click on this and delete it and remove any blank tracks. Here we go. So if we kind of zoom out a bit, this is all we need. The logo and all these things. Now, very easy. Let's select everything and group it. Nice. That's my frame. Save. We want to make sure that this animation stays in place and allows me to animate that hand and then goes out. I don't want to be doing the hand animation when the frame is coming in. So go inside of the group and watch where the animation starts. Go inside the subscribe one, go inside there and you see, look, this is where the hand starts. And this is where the hand stops. So this whole animation is really just the same length as everything else. But I actually want everything to be staying longer on the screen. So what I want is I want to select everything and move it to the right. I made some room in there. So the animation for the frame coming in before things start to move should be about a second, right? So about a second here. I have to pull all these elements back, the channel identity, the sidebar, the shape, not the subscribe call to action yet. So I'm bringing this back in here. So this is the portion where the animation kind of works. Now, if I go in here, this is not good because the buttons will only appear there, you see? And that's not good. I also need to bring my background in there. So this is the problem I need for those buttons to exist on the screen even before the hand moves, right? So I'm trying to show you how to plan ahead. So we are going to actually ungroup this subscribe call to action and expand everything to the left. The animations do not change. And also, if I come out of this group and ungroup everything for a second, I'm going to have to expand everything to the right. Here we go, a bunch of seconds after. So now you see my hand movement is this area right here, but I also need it to stay on the screen, even though I don't see the hand because it's outside of the screen. I, I need these to exist on the screen even before the hand comes in, clicks on all the buttons and comes out. I still need them to be on the screen. So easy. So now is the moment I am grouping everything, right? Because everything is already on the screen. So select the hand, the bell, everything else and group it. And here's the cool trick. If you go in here inside of this new group, you should put markers. This is where the hand starts to come in, put a marker. So we call it hand comes in. Okay. I'm going to show you why. And where the hand has finished animating and the bell start stopped wiggling is here. Click on this and add a marker too. So animation ended. Okay. These are my two markers. And now let me show you why I did this. When you come out of this group, you can see those two moments that are interesting for me here. So now I know exactly what to do about these animations here coming in with the whole thing, right? Because I have these two points where I, I don't have to go inside the group to see when the hand comes in and kind of put my playhead in there and guess, look, the marker is there, stop, stuff starts to happen. Now I select everything and we're getting there. Here we go. 
Now the problem is if you if you group two levels down, the animation doesn't uh, the markers don't show up. So you may want to go in and add another marker here to point to where the animation starts, right? So you go in here, click on the same marker, the same marker comes out there. So now you go inside, outside of it, and you can see these two on the main timeline, right? So that's the nice thing about the markers. If you add a marker inside of a group, it stays with the group so or with the clip. If you add a marker on a clip, it stays with the clip as opposed to a marker on the timeline, which is fixed. So look, I'm moving this group with the whole thing and these markers go with it, right? That's very nice. If you add this to your library now, you drop that in there, you know exactly where things are starting to happen, right? So let's now go and do the rest of the animation. What we want to do is we want this frame to be in full screen when the animation starts to happen. Now, to make it easier to place, you notice here, the group actually includes this area with the hand, although I'm not seeing this. So you may want to right click on this group and say resize group to canvas size. This is going to cause this group to crop everything that's outside of view and crop it to the canvas size. So watch the hand, it's going to disappear. Right? So my whole thing now is here. You can see it. Everything's on the screen. Everything is nicely contained. And if I move this around, it's easy for me to just align it to where it needs to be. So now, see the animation still works because the, the hand comes in. Okay. And now here's the cool, cool stuff. Before the hand starts, I need to be bringing in the frame, right? So let's suppose right here, click on this group. And let's rename this. Rename the group to uh, YouTube CTA frame. That's that's what I'm going to call it. Save project. And now here's where we bring it in. This is the animation. Add an animation, Shift and A to the group. And this is the final key where it is on the screen. I need to move my playhead before and just technically zoom this out until the red area covers everything. Here we go. I may need to zoom more. And make sure there's no white spaces. OK, so there it is. Here we go. That's your animation starting point. Watch this. Everything comes in. Animation plays. And now everything should go outside again. Shift and A after everything's finished, Shift and A to add another animation. And I'm going to actually look at the position for this one. And the position is 148% zooming out. So we're just going to scale it up there. Here we go. That's the size. And I'm just going to put it right in. For, use the arrow keys to make sure you're positioning this correctly like this. Here we go. So now it's going to go out. It's gone. To make this self-contained, control G to group it again. And now it gets cropped again to the whole thing. But it retains these animations that I created, right? So that's the nice thing because now this has truly become a component that I can use. You're going to have to add this to the on top of a video that's playing and you need that video to scale down with this and then scale back up. So how are you going to do this? Well, this is the nice thing. We need to go in and make a hole where the red area is because we I don't want to see red. I don't want to see any of this until I have to bring it in, see what it's doing and come back out. So here it is. You go inside the group, you go inside the other group that's animated. And this is the red area and this is the white background. So all I have to do is just apply media matte to the red. Right? Here we go. Media matte. And you know media matte, what it does, it creates a mask. But I actually want the mask inverted because I want to see everything else outside of it. There, you, there it is. So there's your YouTube screen with no video on it. That mask works. Save. Go outside. And my component my asset is ready. So now, how can we use this? Very nice, very easy. Again, if you want, you can go back into this group and say, look, this is where the animation starts. Place a marker on this timeline in here. 
frame comes in okay and then when the frame comes out is there frame goes out these markers will help us know where to make cuts in our video basically so there it is this is my component right there i can add this to my library so now let's see how we can make this work with a real video right i'm going to add it to my library let's call this one in the graphicious library and call it youtube cta frame easy save boom there it is that's my youtube call to action frame and now let's bring a video in so i'm bringing in a video that i edited a while ago and place it on the timeline and in fact i'm going to just delete this because it's already in my library so this is my video and somewhere in here i may decide to bring in the subscribe frame right so this is my video right there and there's nothing happening here so right here i want to bring that subscribe frame so it helps if you bring this stuff in, uh, you start animating stuff on the screen when there's no speech. So just find a gap in your speech somewhere, you know, don't start animating stuff when you're explaining things. So right here, there's a gap in my speech. I'm going to select this and just press S to slice. And this is where I'm going to start animating stuff. So bring the CTA frame in here again like i said and just place the marker somewhere in here. Now, it may be that this frame animates right there you can see it on top of the video but then you have to bring that video in the same position and scale it so it may be hard to do this if you don't see you only see the starting marker so if you want you can actually add a second marker where the animation stops right there right or very easy just ungroup this completely you know you ungroup this right there so now you see it exactly where it starts and where it stops so you are very free to just slide this here a little bit and then add an animation to your clip to match the other animation exactly so now i've you know i added an animation to my other clip and i'm going to just scale that and honestly I would actually leave a little bit of space around it just to leave a little bit of cropping space, right? So, because if you bring that in here perfectly, when it's animating, you may actually see it uh, kind of a little distance, right? There you go. Look, if it's a perfect animation, it shouldn't. But if your animation is a little off, then you're going to notice a little difference. So there it is. So you can see my video scales down and it shows you the stuff. And now to bring it back out right there, again, very easy. Bring your clip in here and you don't even actually have to make a, a cut in the video. All you need to do is just add an animation in, animation out. So that should be enough. So now the animation here is going to be like 100% scaling and just center everything back. Oops. 100% scaling and you of course have to maybe lock this to make it easy to scale your clip so just put everything back into position zero and zero everywhere so that your video is perfectly back in place or you can use a restore animation so let me just show you this so i added this animation in here this is in there and now it needs to go back out right so even place my playhead in here and go to the animations go to animations here and you have a restore animation and just place that in there and it brings your clip back to full 100 percent. so now this animation should work coming back out as you can see if you feel like it's a little behind i don't know about this because it's a selection but it's going to be so fast people are not going to no notice but you can see it it comes back and then the frame disappears so this is all you have to do when you want to bring this in and i as i said you know it helps if you maybe put markers where the start and the end animations you know kind of start because then it makes it easy for you to just place the animation and scale your object and you're off so again we didn't need this we can stitch back up this clip here okay so now let's watch the whole thing
Okay, great. So there's your YouTube call to action frame. You kind of have a lot of parts, moving parts, but once you get it all set up and added to your library, the only thing you need is to just drag it down, put two animations on your clip and scale it up and down or down and up. And then there you have it. You can place this anywhere you like on your uh, canvas, on your project, and you have a cool animation frame with Camtasia. So that was nice. Before we finish, um, I said I was going to add the logo in there. And that's a nice thing about the, having this thing in a group, because if you open the group now, I can put the logo in here on the screen in just in place without having to change anything else. So if I go inside of this group here, you notice that I have the channel identity group. I go in there and this is the shape and this is the name of the channel. Now, the name of the channel will be customizable if you look back outside and you click on this before you add it to your library. You have all of these things here, the quick properties. Of course, they're a little weird and you don't know which one is which, but you can click on this quick property editor and you can start putting stuff in. So look, the channel name is here. I'm just going to give it the channel name, you know, label. Now, this orange callout is the one with the logo. I don't need this. I don't want to customize that, and I'll show you why. So I'm taking it out. This gray color is the color of these little suggested videos. If you want to make that changeable as well, if you want to change them, you can leave it in here. There's 21 of them. And you can also have the color of the callout with the subscribe button. I don't want to change that. And the text subscribe and subscribed. Again, we can have it here, subscribe and subscribe. Okay, these two, maybe if you have a channel in a different language and you want to change the name of the button, like it says it in your language, you can have that available in there. And I don't care for this gray one and the background color. I don't want to change that, but maybe if you do and everything else and I don't need. So now the thing that I would like to change is the name of the channel and the logo. So the logo, let's save this for now and let's go back in here and say, okay, how can I change? change the logo. Okay, you go in in here and you open the channel identity group and there's your orange or you know circle with where the logo should be. So anyway, let's zoom in here and I'm going to bring my logo in the project, right? So I'm going to go to my hard drive and bring my logo in. So my logo is really just a transparent PNG. If I drag it in here, you can see it actually stays inside of that box because that's the group clipping. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to really resize it, make it kind of small, small, small. So control and mouse wheel, you just resize it like that and make it fit that area right there. Here we go. That's my logo right there. Okay. It's kind of small. It's pixelated because another thing in Camtasia, when you create a group, it creates a canvas inside the group and those pixels become the pixels. That's it. And everything else you do in there is going to look pixelated. Now, if you want this to prevent this, you have to ungroup everything and group it again to make sure that everything is at the size that you want it to be. But this logo is kind of nice because it's very small. So just stretch that over there. Now, one word of warning, if you buy this and it's got the logo in here, you have to go in here and replace it. Having the logo available as a replaceable quick property is possible, and I'll show you, but the logo you bring in must be the same exact size as the one that was built, what, that the asset was built with. Okay, so if my logo is how large is it? My logo is 1500 by 1890 pixels. Your logo needs to be the same. So what I would suggest if you're building this, make the logo a square. The logo is going to be a square 1080 by 1080, you know, and your logo has to be the same size if you don't want Camtasia to completely mangle and destroy it when you put it in there, because Camtasia is not going to look at the ge geometry. Uh, it's just going to just replace it, assuming that it's the same one, and it's not. So that's one problem with, with Camtasia. So in my case, I can take my logo and make it square, and then I replace it in here, and I make sure that it becomes 
you know, replaceable because it, the size is the same. So there's my logo. Obviously, I don't want my logo to be on a yellow background, but my yellow background, this is the shape. It's going to serve as the mask for the logo if you want. So if your logo is rectangular or square and it's got a different background, this image, I'm going to move it at the top and I'm going to go to visual effects and I'm going to apply media mat to the circle. Media mat right there to the circle. That is going to crop the image to that size. Now, okay, if you don't want that to be the case where you see just the logo, if your logo has a, you want to have a background for the logo, just make a copy of this shape and paste it right there. There you go. And you can give it a different color if you like. Let's suppose maybe remove the media mat from it, by the way, because it was a copy. So then you can change the color of that and you can have that as a background. If for some reason, when you paste it, it gets added in the wrong place, just move, move it down again there. Camtasia, sometimes it just creates some funky, funky stuff with these things. Here you go. So you can just bring it in, scale it. And you see, it's going to crop it to the group. So just make sure you don't go over the edge of that. Here you go. So now this is uh, the shape. I'm going to make this one purple or something so that we can recognize it because that can be an, a, a, an asset you can replace. So here we go. Save, go back out, click on this. And now you've got this thing in here. All of these channel name, subscribe, subscribed. You've got the color of the callouts. But if we go to the quick properties now, Look at all the stuff you can customize. And I'm going to add the avatar, add the image in here and say, call it channel logo or just, just call it logo. All right. And we can also, you see the purple color? Use that also and call it logo background, BG. I don't know. So here we go. Save. And now from the outside, you can change stuff. Let's change the background color of the logo because it's ridiculous. So change that to a very light gray, maybe like that. You can see it changing here. And if you want to change the logo, and this is the part where I'm going to just show you, if I bring the a new logo in and drag it on top of the logo here, you can see it's getting replaced. But because it's not the same size as the, uh, the one before, it's you can see it's not replacing it correctly. But now let me bring back the other one that I had before, replace it, and it gets right there in place, right? So that's very cool. And changing the channel name again, it's one of these fields. So let's call this one my name, done. There it is, channel name changed title in here. I mean, okay, the title, if you don't want it to be that dark, again, you can make that a reusable property. Go in here and find it. I think that's the one. There it is. Vid title. Save. And now vid title can be blue for some reason. Okay. Or a very light gray anyway. And if I don't like these ones because they're quite heavy. Oh, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> You can change these also to make them like lighter and not so intrusive. There you go. That is it. I mean, this is the way to personalize this and use it. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. I know these videos are getting too long, but I'm trying to show you some really cool stuff that's very complex, maybe sometimes, you know, but I hope you learn a bunch of stuff and the way things work. And if sometimes we make mistakes and they don't really come out the way we wanted it, we can do it again and, you know, just understand how things work in Camtasia. So thanks again for watching. And I do appreciate your support. If you liked this video, click and like it, subscribe to my channel. And also, if you want to buy this already, made in my asset library click the link in the description and it's it's really not very expensive so it helps support my efforts and again if you haven't subscribed or if you haven't upgraded to Camtasia 2022 uh, there's a link in the description also for that so if you do click that link it's an affiliate link it doesn't mean anything extra uh, for you to pay but I would get a small commission uh, from that purchase which would help with this 
effort uh, here. So thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next one.